Hello and welcome to another episode of Nate's Forge. Some of you may know I've made my favorite dinosaur, the Allosaurus, but now we're going to make the best dinosaur. But Nate, what is this crime against paleontology? So this beautiful beast is the Magdeburg Unicorn. I found him on Reddit and I loved him immediately. He was uncovered in Germany in 1663 and uh, they didn't know what it was, so they just pieced a bunch of bones together. It's got the legs of a mammoth, the head of a woolly rhino, and a narwhal's tusk. Look at this idiot. Right, let's go to the workshop and make it. Right, we're gonna start off with making the horn, which is an actual narwhal tusk. Aaron convinced me to make it out of Damascus and I stupidly agreed. Because it doesn't need to be hardened, we're just gonna make it out of mild steel and leaf spring. So we've already cut out the mild steel because I'm a very prepared guy. All we have to do now is cut up the rest of it, which is old leaf springs. And I've got I like an oodles of these, so we've got plenty of steel to make the horn. Right, so we've got enough mild steel and carbon steel, and now we're gonna mix them up and mash them together. Uh, you know the drill. Wait, did I? Oh my goodness, I'm not very good at stacking, am I? Watch the magic of the vice. Look at that. Well done. You're the best oh, welder here. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh my goodness, stop. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> Zoom in on that. Mate, your welding looks pretty terrible. <laughs> don't, don't you dare. I am going to turn that on. Brand new forge, ribbon burner. Don't have a blower yet, so we're using the vacuum cleaner. Works like a treat. Uh, so I'm going to take it out when it's cherry red, and I'm going to hit it a few taps under the bilking tin just to flatten the gaps. I'm going to put a bit of borax on it and throw it back in. So that's the three billets of Damascus all drawn out and they're looking perfect. They're in a nice triangle long shape and we're going to use this which is a dishing tool I made and we're going to put it on the pilkin tin and I'm going to dish inside each one and it's going to already start that curve and just give us a little bit wider at the base because uh, the base of the horn is going to be about 100 mil, maybe 120 mil and it's going to be
Uh, so we've made the three strands out of the Damascus. We sanded a bit of it and the swords of Damascus come out and we're not a massive fan of it. We wire brush the bits where the splits in and I think when we twist it all together, it'll come together and it'll really look like a narwhal tusk. So I think we're gonna try and force breaks into the Damascus. I know everyone's going crazy right now, but uh, I think it'll look cool. And we couldn't have done it if we didn't make it out of Damascus. So let's break it. So that's all of them cracked. Uh, they look really interesting. I was doing all the bad things that you shouldn't do with Damascus, like heat it up, cooling it down, hitting with a hammer, put it under press, and it looks wonderful. So the next stage is to weld them all up and twist them. So that's it roughly forged into a tusk. And honestly, I'm absolutely thrilled with it. Like if you look at all the cracks and stuff and you look at actual narwhal tusk, they have all these weird imperfections and craziness. We just need to twist it round a bit more. But apart from that, I'm absolutely thrilled at how it's starting to come out. So we did some tweaking and wire brushed it and it is looking awesome. I love how the lines have all come out. Uh, so now we just need to <laughs> make the skull and the rest of it. So the first part of the skull we're gonna make is the lower half of the top part. We're starting with a 50 mil round bar that's uh, 320 long. So this is the length of the bar we're starting with. And I'm gonna isolate this part and then draw it down. I'm gonna isolate this part and then draw it down. Now we're going to do the bottom jaw. I've just stuck two lengths of 50 mil round bar in the forge. They're 500 mil long. This is the drawing that we're going to make it to. It's not 2D, so we're going to have to form it in a way that the bottom jaw is. It's going to be fine. And in fact, it was not fine. So we have the two pieces of the jaw. I was originally planning to do out one piece, but it was just too heavy for me and too heavy for the poking tin. I just cut them in half and then forged them separately and I would just weld them together. It does give me the opportunity to weld it in a different shape without having to bend it. I'm really happy with how it's shaping up. I've thrown some 40 or 50 mil stock in there and we're gonna forge them out into the teeth, which are quite big considering the dinosaur is big. So the bottom jaw is almost done. We've attached the teeth and we're gonna stick it together like this and then I'll be able to munch. Right. 
So the jaw is done, it is looking absolutely awesome. Uh, I'm absolutely loving the teeth. Now it's the top of the head. So since last you've seen us, uh, we've done quite a bit. So we profiled the edges of these uh, to make them the right sort of shape. Then we added the teeth, which we profiled and added to make sure they were perfect. And then we added the underside of the mouth, which is very important. Otherwise, how would you chew his carrots? What we're going to do next is we're going to make the top of the head. To do that, we're going to make it out of the 6mm plate that we have here. I don't want to make it out of 50mm bar because I don't hate myself that much. The techniques for this are the exact same as I use for the bottom bit, except it's just thicker steel and uh, just a bit bigger. That's the head done, it's looking awesome, but you're not allowed to see it till the end. So next we're going to be making the spine. To make the spine, what we're going to do is put the tube inside these dies, and as it hammers down, it's going to narrow down the tube at certain points, and it's going to create the undulations that the spine has, except it's still going to be creating a strong spine, rather than cutting it up and welding them all different places, we're going to just forge it in one. I have a thinner die as well as a thick die, and this one will be to isolate each vertebrae individually. You can see it's thinner uh, than this one. So this is said tube that we're gonna make out of. We have a crane here, because it is quite heavy. It's 120 mil wide by 2.5 meters long. And when it gets hot, it seems to get heavier. So I'll be holding it here. I'll be working in the power hammer with the dies, and I'll be using my arm and my back to work the lever on the power hammer because I don't have anyone else to work for me and the cameraman's useless and all that jazz. If this doesn't go well, it's Aaron's fault.
So that is the spine done. Uh, it made it really easy with these two contraptions attached to the Pilkington and the crane. Uh, it actually worked really well. We store in the 40 mil into the fire and they'll become the ribs. So that's the ribs together, we're all forged and we've matched them up. Now we're outside and we've got the coat forged lit and we're going to throw them inside and we're going to weld them up. Uh, to do this, we're going to heat them up till it's about red hot. Now I'm just going to throw a little bit of borax on there. You can kind of see it go like glass. And then we'll throw it back in the forge. So we'll scrape out the coals. So you get a nice white hot flame at the base. Put that on top and then we'll scrape the coals over the top of the ribs. Uh, so I just lightly tapped the weld together. I think it was just the perfect amount of heat. The outside was starting to fizzle, but I think the inside would be a nice temperature and I'm fairly certain that's welded. Lovely. Love a good fire weld. So we're going to have one final heat and we're going to draw the tip down to a little bit more of a point. Now the ribs are all fire welded and they look awesome. And we're going to grab the ribs, hold them up, tack them on, fully weld them up, then get the oxy torch and then heat up the little duck heads on it and then smash them into the spine. So we're back at Michael's workshop and we're going to use the plasma to cut out the hips and then we're going to take the hips back to my workshop and forge them out. That's the hips done, now legs. The big ones we need to make them wider, so we'll be making them wider, obviously, and the small ones we'll be making smaller, but we're gonna be using the same tube. So we're gonna do a bit of forging, and then we're gonna do a bit of fabricating. Uh, I'm gonna get a grinder, and I'm gonna cut myself out. Yes, my guards are quite accommodating with the glasses and uh, this grinder. I actually smuggled this up my ass.
So that's the feet done. So we did pretty much the exact same process as we did on the bones and the legs, heating up different spots and then hammering them in and then drawing them down to a bit more of a finer point. And then we welded them up uh, to the back of the heel uh, to give them a really big, weird three toes look. Now onto the tail. Ugh! Oh, that's warm. So now we've taken another tube for the tail. We've just drawn it down and we'll put the sections in to separate the vertebrae. Uh, then we'll do some other stuff to make it look a bit more like a tail. That's the unicorn done. Now we just have to put them together. So to start that process, what we're going to do is we're going to join the legs together first and then get it into the right proportions. Then we're going to join the spine. Then we're going to put the head on because we want it to all look perfect. Like, just like the perfect, perfect dinosaur in the museum. Oh! Rise, unicorn! One moment, please. Why is everything so heavy? Fancy passing me one. I don't care what you say or think. You're not the artist, I am. It's not far off. Just come down a wee bit. Go on, Aaron, help me. It looks so much better with the other leg on. So it's a brand new day, I finished the head, uh, we welded on a bit of a tube on the back just to connect it to the spine, we'll be putting on that in just a second but I need to cap the top of the spine and I need to cut a round circle out of this. But that brings me to my new toy, a plasma cutter. So we're going to cut out the circle with a new plasma cutter and hopefully it'll be glorious. I reckon I should have made it bigger. I am loving it. I think I prefer it closer though. Like with the shadows under the head and everything. Riders, riders of burden, fear, fear no evil.
hope you enjoyed that epic video. Oh my goodness, look at the size of him. He's almost done. All we need to do now is lacquer him, uh, but I'll wait till another day. I need to spend at least 15 minutes up here playing with him. So if you want to see big projects like this, check out the folk video. It's pretty epic as well. Or the Witcher Sword. Uh, they're all good videos. And if you have any questions, I'll answer them in the comments. Boom! Lit. Come here, play. Come here, play. Pick any card. Pick any card. Pick any card, any card. The Pilkington is definitely the limiting factor in this workshop. It's just so small. Feel the rhythm, feel the ride. It's dishing time. So yeah. If this had an actual plan or like drawings, like an engineer drawings, fair enough. This is art. This isn't like that. Yes, you. Very pretty. So strong. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. Woo! I'm in a prisoner tube. I'm a beautiful butterfly. I'm a cameraman. I can't do anything right. Put something in a pan, you old boot. From the size of workshop to the size of product, I think it's doing alright. I think it's doing alright. It's a genius. You constantly keep on forgetting. Sing climbs a unicorn. You don't remember hating big folk this much.